Today, I'm going to attempt to diagnose and fix an error code I recently received on my IGT S2000 slot machine. Along the way, I'm going to learn a few things about slot machines that I didn't know, and I'm going to learn quite a few specific things about my particular machine. Hi and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. This video is a slight departure from the types of videos I normally do on my channel, but I do occasionally throw something in there like replacing a battery in a PlayStation 4 controller, which I guess technically is still DIY electronics. But this video isn't indicative of a change that I'm making in my channel, and I'll return to my regular content with future videos. In this case, I'm going to go through the DIY steps that I used to diagnose and repair an error I was receiving on my slot machine. Maybe some of the steps here can help you out for diagnosing and fixing errors within your own projects. Now, first off, let me apologize for some of the poor audio that you're going to hear in this video. I actually got a new phone and it doesn't want to play nice with my wireless mic. I had to use an adapter. So therefore the video is a little bit muddled. It might help during those parts of the video if you turn on closed captioning, if you have a little problems understanding the dialogue. I purchased my machine, an IGT S2000 triple red, white, and blue from a reseller about eight and a half years ago. Now, these machines are heavy. This weighs in at somewhere around about 250 pounds. So just getting it down to the basement alone was quite a bit of work. But the machine has worked flawlessly until just recently. Since I hadn't had any issues, about the only thing I knew about the machine was what the reseller had showed me. How to power on the machine, get the money out of the machine, and how to reset it with the jackpot key when it hit big and a hand power was required. That's really all I knew. So when I powered on the machine a couple of weeks ago, I immediately knew something was wrong since the machine goes through a boot up process, as you see here, and once all the checks are passed, the reels will spin and the LED display will show credits. Instead, when I powered on the machine this time, I was met with a flashing red and white candle on the top of the machine and a message that said, call attendant. Well, I guess I'm the attendant, so there's no one else to call. So I did what I initially normally do for all of my problems. I Googled it. Luckily, there's a ton of information available on these types of slot machines. And the first step said to press and hold the main board reset button. I didn't even know there was a reset button. But I found it pressed and held it, and eventually the LCD display showed a message that said main battery low. So that meant I was going to need to remove the main board, locate, and replace a battery of some sort. Luckily, these machines are made to be serviceable in the field. Okay, to remove the main board, the first thing you're probably going to have to do is remove the coin tray. It simply lifts off. Be careful because there could be wires attached. And then there's a tab right here. We simply pull. That will unplug from the back. And we very gently slide it out and there's our board this is the main board from my slot machine now if you are a slot machine expert i'm sure i'm going to make some wrong assumptions here because i know very little about this but through my research i have discovered a few things about my particular machine from a tag i actually found on this it tells me that the machine was manufactured in april of 2004 so it's almost exactly 20 years old it is revision A, and that 2004 date pretty much lines up and is confirmed by the dates marked on some of these chips, which also tell me a little bit more about the machine. Looking just a little bit closer, there are three primary stepper chips that are really the operating system for the machine, including things like the actual game itself, pay tables, coin validation, hopper control, and more. Two of these have a 2005 date, meaning they may have been upgraded in the field or more likely by the reseller, since I'd requested certain features like the ability to both accept and pay out by coin as opposed to a paper credit slip. Another chip, the version chip, controls denominations in whether the machine is multi or single denominational. And note that many of these chips were manufactured for a specific region to comply with certain state laws. Based on the part numbers and the NJ found on each, my chips were manufactured for use in New Jersey, meaning the machine likely began its life somewhere in New Jersey in the spring of 2004. But enough about the general history of this particular machine. Let's move on to taking a look at trying to repair what's wrong. But through my troubleshooting process, and thanks to a lot more knowledgeable people online, through use of this reset button, I was eventually able to get the machine to display a main battery low message. And that refers to this coin cell battery right here in the corner. And you can see that that is, I'm guessing this is dated October of 2015. 
which means this battery is about eight and a half years old. And as I come to find out, the expected battery life of this is about seven years. So that is probably about right. But this is what I'm going to need to replace to make the machine functional again. Note that some boards may have a second 3.6 volt battery installed here. Depending on your particular board type, this battery isn't needed for personal use and it is generally recommended to remove this battery as it can begin leaking and potentially damage other components. It can be removed and a jumper installed between the positive terminals. And if that is the battery causing your errors, just removing it may fix your problem. In my case, it appears that the reseller had already removed this battery, so my issue was definitely being caused by the small coin cell battery. Taking a little closer look at the battery, there are a couple things here I'm going to have to figure out or overcome. First off, naturally the battery is soldered directly to the PCB. So I'm going to have to desolder this existing one. And the second issue is naturally they installed this battery so that the cathode is right over the code telling you what type of battery it is. Now there are a few clues that we can pick up here. First of all, we know it's a three volt battery. It's obviously a lithium battery manufactured by Panasonic. And looking closely, this first letter appears to be a B. Through the little tiny circle, we see a two and then it ends with three zero. Now the first letter B tells us the type of chemistry in use here. So this is a carbon monofluoride lithium battery. And that might be a little bit different than the C batteries that you're used to, which are mang manganese dioxide lithium batteries. The second letter is almost surely an R, since that indicates the shape of the battery and it's round. So we know we've got a BR and then a something 20 something 30. Well, the next two letters here tell us the diameter of the battery. Using a set of digital calipers, I was able to measure the diameter of this to be right at 23 millimeters. And the last two numbers tell you the actual height or thickness of the battery in tenths of a millimeter. So this one happens to be three millimeters thick. Putting all that together, I was able to determine that I've got a BR2330 battery. So this type of battery brought up a couple of additional problems. First off, I did not want to just desolder this and solder a new battery into place. Instead, what I really want to do is I want to solder in a battery holder. So if time ever comes again that I need to replace this battery, I can just pop the old one out and pop a new one in. But try as I might, I could not find a single cell battery holder, at least on Amazon, for the 2330. Everything was for the 2032, which as you might imagine is a much more common battery. Now, I did find some other online sources for the 2330, but they generally either required a huge quantity purchase of like a 500 or required either me to pay a crazy shipping charge for something that's a 50 cent piece and would take weeks to arrive. So I started to wonder, could I either use a CR2032 battery, which again is three volt, or could I find the BR battery in a 2032 footprint? I saw plenty of forum posts regarding slot machines where people had successfully used the CR2032 battery without any issues. But doing a little bit more research on the difference between the BR and the CR batteries, I did find that they're not always exactly interchangeable. The BR batteries have a very low discharge rate per year, and they maintain a constant voltage for quite some time before they sharply drop off, where the CR batteries have a more gradual degradation in voltage over time, and in some cases, a circuit may be designed for a particular characteristic of the battery. And finally, I found this quote from National Instruments that says it's not recommended to use a CR battery instead of a BR battery. While I can use a CR2032 probably temporarily, I decided I'd be more comfortable if I used a BR2032. Luckily, I was able to find one single listing on Amazon for a BI2032 battery. It's going to take about a week to get here instead of my normal one to two days that I get from Amazon, but I've gone ahead and placed an order for that. But of course, the first step is going to be to desolder this battery, try to clean out the through holes, and mount my battery holder, hoping that the spacing on the pins are the same as the through holes on the PCB, but just from eyeballing it, looks like it's going to be the right size. Now, of course, to desolder this, I'm going to need to get to the back side of the PCB, so I'm going to need to remove it from the mounting tray. Now it appears that there are only seven screws holding this down. And hopefully after I take those seven screws, it will simply lift off and I can flip it over. Okay, I think I have all the screws removed. So now let's see if we can move this board. A little bit of resistance. See, they're just stuck. Oh, nope, there it is. I missed a screw. 
Okay, so I guess there were eight screws. Let's try this again. That's better. Sure we don't bang anything pulling that out. Right here are our two solder joints for that battery that we need to attempt to desolder. Okay, these are the two terminals I need to desolder. And let's give this a shot. I've put just a little bit of flux on there. So let's see if we can warm this up. I've got a small spudger underneath here. See my flux is starting to boil. Okay, that side is out. That wasn't too bad. Now we're just going to have to clean up the hole, but hoping this side's just going to kind of want to fall out. Okay, it moved. It's loose. There it goes. And right underneath here is the old battery. So it is free and loose. Now the last thing I need to do before I saw my battery holders, I'm going to need to clean up these hole, these through holes and get some of that old solder out of there. And to clean up my through, through holes, I usually use a combination of one of these little soldering pumps and a little bit of desoldering wick. So I'm going to clean these holes up and be right back. Okay, I've got my through, through holes cleaned up at least enough. It wasn't too bad. And the good news is my new battery holder, that fits into there. And so now all I've got to do is come over here and solder that into place. So now I've got a nice battery holder in place. So if I ever have to replace this battery again, it'll be much, much easier the next time. Now I just need to put the PCB back into the tray. All right, everything is reassembled. It's ready for a new battery and to be installed back into the machine. Now again, I'm sure I would be fine to put a CR2032 in here, but my BR2032 has actually already shipped. It'll be here in a couple of days. This has been down for a couple of weeks. I'm just gonna wait a couple more days for the BR2032 battery to come in so I don't have to take this thing back out again and replace this battery. So these are my new batteries which just arrived and they actually arrived a couple of days earlier than expected. There they are. They look to be the exact same size, which they should be, of, as the CR2032. And just verify for sure that it is going to fit into our coin holder. And it fits in there just fine. Okay, now I just need to install my new battery in my new coin holder. And I did just go ahead and date this for reference, but hopefully I'll be able to go another at least four or five years before I have to replace this. But at this point, we're ready to stick it back in the machine and hope everything boots up and comes back online as normal. And putting everything back together is just the opposite of the way we took it apart. So and we will carefully slide our tray into place. Need to push it back so we feel it engaged. There it goes, it locks into place. Now I can put my coin tray back, again, making sure I don't get any wires pinned anywhere here. And snap that down. Okay, and we're ready to power it up and hope for the best. Okay, I pulled the camera back a bit so we can try to see everything. And we're gonna turn the power on, keep our fingers crossed. Okay, I can, I can hear the bill collector, but I still have the lights, and now we've got a tamper alarm sounding, and now we've got a RAM error. So I'm going to try a reset here. I don't know whether this is the right or wrong thing to do. And I've still got the same RAM error. So now... That means I'm going to have to dig in a little bit of that. I've got the battery fixed, but now I have this RAM error. Okay, I've done a little bit of research, so we're going to try what it says to do online. We're going to turn this back on. And right now it says testing memory on here. There's our RAM error. Now it says we need to turn our jackpot key over here one time. It says game error, CRC mismatch. Turn it again. Now it says to press the test switch for three seconds. So I turned that four times. So we're going to go down here and hold this for one, two, three seconds. Now it says to please close the main door. So we will close that. It's initializing. 
Again, going through a memory test. Now it's doing an auto config, and I heard the speakers kick on. That's the first time I've heard that. And it looks like we have a working slot machine. Let's double check here just to make sure. And let's also try our buttons. And I actually won something. So let's just go ahead and cash out, make sure our coin hopper is still working. So it looks like everything is repaired and working. So that wasn't as difficult. It was a little nerve wracking at times, but it seems to be back up and running and ready for operation. While I was a bit intimidated at first, since I knew so little about how my machine operated, the fix actually ended up being pretty simple once I did just a bit of research. And my total repair cost, around $8, significantly less than calling a technician or sending out the board for repair. And as an added bonus, I've made future battery replacements much easier, and I learned a lot more about how my slot machine works should I get another error issue down the road. So if you own a slot machine and need to replace the battery at some point, hopefully this video might help you out. But even if you don't, maybe it can show you that just by doing a little bit of diagnosing and research, it might be possible for you to consider repairing your own equipment at a substantially lower cost than paying someone else to do it for you. I'll be back soon with my normal videos on using Home Assistant and building your own DIY electronics devices. But until that time, I'd like to say thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.